Good morning, guys. Today we're going to go over a practice problem from Chapter 5 of Physics 101, Laws of Motion. So if you're interested in trying to solve this question for yourself, go ahead and pause the video right now, and let's jump right into it. A large wooden crate with mass of 100 kilograms sits on a concrete floor. The coefficients of friction for wood and concrete are 0.5 and 0.3 for static and kinetic, respectively. Question A asks, what is the force of friction when the crate is simply at rest on the floor? Well, in such a situation, so with any question, usually I try to make a force diagram so I have a better understanding of what's going on. So we have this box, right? We know that it's 100 kilograms. That's its mass. And that's pretty much all we have is information. We know we have coefficients of friction for the wood on concrete, but we're not actually going to um, we're, like we're not, there aren't going to be any forces of friction in this situation. We have a weight vector. We also have a normal vector responding to that weight. But because there aren't any parallel forces like this or like this, no force applied, there is no friction. Um, right. So we know that um, we know that static friction friction is reactive right and because it is reactive what that basically means is if we have a force applied as long as we're under its um, boundary at the limit of static friction um, the force applied will always be equal to the static friction and what that means is as long as the box is not moving it, as long as we try to push the box with a force that is um, equal to or smaller than um, the static friction, we're not going to be able to move it, right? And so the force applied, the, fo the static friction will always match the force applied up until it, it um, overwhelms the static friction maximum. Okay, and so because of that, and also because there's no parallel forces, there are no parallel forces, we write no over here. No parallel forces. There is nothing for static friction to respond to. And thus we have a static friction of zero newtons. That's our answer for part A. All right, let's move on to part B. I'm gonna go ahead and write that right now. So the question asks, question B asks, what is the force of friction what is the force of friction when a worker pushes the crate? When a worker pushes the crate with a force applied of I believe it was 500 newtons. Let me double check. It is 200 newtons, not 500. 200 newtons. Okay, so again, we're gonna be using our little diagram. I'll make a smaller box this time, I suppose. And since, we're, since we have someone pushing on it, it's not only gonna have weight and normal force, which are in terms of Y, normal force, we are also going to have a force applied. And let's say that he's pushing in the right direction, right? In the positive x direction. In that case, we have a vector over here as well. Let me properly draw that arrow. We have a vector over here. Let's call it that force applied. And it's 200 newtons, right? Okay, well, um, in this situation, we know that there is going to be some force of friction, right? Because we're pushing in this direction, whether it whether this box is going to move or not, there will be some sort of friction that is trying to resist this push, and that's why we call these resistive forces. Um, so let's just see. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to write out the formula for finding like the max um, kinetic, the max not kinetic. I'm sorry. We're finding a max static friction, right? So static friction, let's call it max. 
is going to be equal to the coefficient times n, right? And so what we have is basically, oh, the coefficient of s, my bad. What we basically have is, since this is mass times, grab, mass times the g vector, um, what we have basically is 0 0.5 times the mass, which is 100, I believe, was it 100? It is 100 kilograms times 100 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And what does that give us? Let's just enter that into our calculator. If I can just find it, it's way over here. We have 0 0.5. We actually don't need a calculator to solve this, but I'm just going to double check, as we all do. We have 490 newtons, and that's basically the 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 maximum that the force of the static friction can resist, right? So if we surpass 490 newtons, the object's going to start moving, and it's going to start. Um, there's not going to be any static friction. There's going to be only kinetic friction. So here in this situation, we don't have a force applied that exceeds that. Therefore, um, the question is asking for the force of friction. And because um, the force of friction, the force of static friction is reactive, meaning it'll match whatever you have unless it exceeds this, we basically have an, a force equal to that, which is 200 newtons. But it's worth noting that it will be negative, though, depending on how we set up our coordinate system. Um, it is a, the magnitude of the force is 200 newtons, but it's heading in that direction. I'll just write negative 200 newtons, but you can write however you want to write. Um, and that's it. It's a very simple question. And we know that the crate does not move. Not move. Okay. Now we're going to move on to question three, or should I say part C? Question C. Question C asks, what is the force of friction? What is the force of friction when? When a worker pushes the crate with a force of 500 newtons. When a worker pushes the crate with F of A is equal to 500 newtons. And I'm gonna actually use some of the work, some of the work from last, the last part. So we have a box, 500 newtons being pushed in this direction, that's the force applied. So we're gonna have a reactive friction force. We're gonna ask ourselves if it's static or kinetic. Of course, this is on a plane, and that's why it's experiencing friction to begin with. There's a weight, and there is no force. It's just a good habit to write all of them. Here, um, because we calculated the static friction threshold in the last problem, in the last part of this problem, we know that it's 490 newtons. And because 490 newtons is smaller than 500 newtons, we know that the object is going to move and we're going to be dealing with kinetic friction. And that's pretty much it. Like Kinetic friction is very similar. It has a constant times the n vector, and so we obtain 0 0.3 times the mass of 100 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, and we obtain, if I just put that into my calculator, we get 294 94 newtons, right? And if we consider the vector, it'll be, its magnitude is 294, but its, it's uh, x component will be negative 294. And that is it. It's a pretty, pretty much it. Um, maybe we can do one final question, actually. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna do one more question before we head off. This one is not difficult either. 
I'm not going to write the question out. I'm just going to give the example. And you're going to see what I mean by that right now. I'm just going to ask the, I'm just going to write the question. Okay, so I'm going to give information. Block of weight of W is equal to 100 newtons, okay? That's one, and it rests on a floor, on a floor, and we have a coefficient of static friction, which is equal to 0 0.4. And the question is asking to calculate, calculate the N and friction forces in each situation. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and draw these out one by one. So the first example is the following. We just have a block and it sits there, right? So we're gonna, it, it, since it's just sitting there and there's no other forces being applied on it, we can just go ahead and start by writing out the diagram, drawing the diagram, the force diagram. And so si since we see that there's no parallel X forces, we know already that there's gonna be a force of static friction of zero, right? And also kinetic, but it's not even moving. So what's the point of writing that? And as for Newton's, um, not newtons, I'm sorry, the normal force, it will basically be 100 newtons as well. Just pointing upwards, right? And that's it. Very simple question. The next question asks, I'm sorry, not asks, the next situation is the same as before, but we have a force applied of 220 newtons pointing down. So we still have the same weight, right, which is 100 newtons. However, in order to find the um, normal force, and note that there's no friction again. I'm just going to go ahead and eliminate that. There's no friction since there's no parallel X forces. Since we're dealing, no, no parallel forces to the plane that the box is sitting on. So we're going to look for N, right? And N is a reactive force, right? It's going to basically react to all the pressure, to all, not, not all the pressure, to all the force that's pointing against the plane that it's sitting on. So in this situation, we have 20 newtons from that, um, right? And we basically also have 100 newtons from this. They're both pointing downwards. And so that's a total of 120 newtons pointing downwards. And the new, because the plane hasn't like broken or anything, we know that the normal force is capable of um, just sending, not sending, but creating an equivalent force in the opposite direction. So we know that the net force, not net force, the normal force, I gotta stop coming up with random words for N, the normal force will be 100 newtons. And that's pretty much it here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There is actually a, I'm sorry, I made a bit of a mistake here. Hmm, one second. Yeah, over here we, if you wanted to calculate yeah, no, I, no, I'm correct. This is correct. There's just one thing. If you wanted to calc at this point, we can actually calculate the um, the static friction maximum, right? Since we have a normal force of 120, we're actually able to calculate it. We have 120 newtons times 0 0.4, which is equal to 48 newtons, and that's it. The 48 newtons of maximum um, fr static friction, meaning if it exceeds, if in this situation, the a parallel force exceeded 48 newtons, then we would see some movement. On to the next situation. And I believe here we're going to start having some parallel forces. 
right? So yeah, we have, instead of having 20 newtons pointing in that direction, we have 20 newtons in this direction. And so we're gonna also see a, I actually like putting it on the, odd, the other side. We have 20 newtons, which is the force applied. So we're gonna also see some um, static friction in this scenario, right? Um, depending on whether or not it can, the box can withstand not moving, right? We also have weight and the normal force, of course. And we're just asking ourselves, what will be the static friction? So first of all, we're gonna have to calculate the normal force, which in this scenario is straight up 100 newtons. Then we can calculate the static the maximum static force which is 100 newtons times 0 0.4 which is 40 newtons and so we see that 20 newtons is under the the limit of 40 newtons meaning um the force of friction will overwhelm the force applied so we will not see any movement so no movement and also we know that the actual force of friction will be equal to 20 newtons and i guess you could say negative 20 newtons it's just going to be equal to the force applied right because the object will not be moving the net force in the situation is zero okay and we have one final situation in this situation i believe we have two forces we have 20 newtons pointing downwards. I'm not going to write force apply. We all know that. And we have 40 newtons in this direction. So we still have weight. We still have a normal force. And we still have force of static friction. Right? We're just going to first um, find out what the normal force is. And since we have this equal to 100, we have 100 newtons of weight and we also have an additional 20 newtons of weight of not weight of force applied downwards those are going to add up and since the floor is resisting the the push downwards we are going to have an equal um an equal normal force which is 20 plus 100 and so we can now calculate the f s max which is u s times the normal force which is 0 0.4 times 120 newtons, which is 48 newtons. And now we see that um, we also have a force applied that is parallel to the plane, that is 40 newtons, right? But 40 newtons is inferior to 48 newtons, and thus we know that the box will not move, and that we're gonna have a force of friction of 40 newtons. And there you have it. That's the answer to those two questions. I hope that you enjoy. Leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.